नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवान निर्विशेष सुनने वाले पश्चात से तार नहीं चलो प्रभुपान की जाए Where is that sound coming from? People are talking. Fan. No, no, no. People are talking or something so loudly. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास कथोजय उदीर ये नष्टु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी रीडिंग फ्रॉम द श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो टेन चैप्टर सेवेंटी थ्री लॉर्ड कृष्णा ब्लेसेस द लिबरेटेड किंग्स टेक्स्ट टेन राज्य ऐश्वर्य मदोन्नो राज्यमदोन्नो राज्यमदोन्नो न श्रेय विंदते नृप न श्रेय विंदते नृप मया मोहित निन्मा मोहित निन्मा मोहित मनते संपदोचलाज्यमदोन्नो न श्रेय विंदते नृप मया मोहित मनते संपदोचलाज्यमदोन्नो न श्रेय विंदते नृप मया मोहित मनते संपदोचलाज्यमदोन्नो न श्रेय विंदते नृपया मोहित निन्या मनते संपदोचला राज्यश्वर्य मनोनो न श्रेय विंदते नृप मोहित निन्ते संपदोचलाज्यमदोन्नो न श्रेय विंदते नृप मया मोहित निन्या मनते संपदोचला मदर्स राजमदोन्नो न श्रेय विंदते नृप मया मोहित निन्या मनते संपदा चला मदर्स 
ರಾಜ್ಯ ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯ ಮದು ಅನ್ನದ್ದು ನ ಶ್ರೇಯೋ ವಿಂದತೆ ನೃಪ ಕನ್ಮಾಯ ಮೋಹಿತೋ ನಿತ್ಯ ಮನ್ಯತೆ ಸಂಪದೋ ಛಲಾಹ ರಾಜ್ಯ ವಿತ್ ಸಾವರ್ನಿಟಿ ಐಶ್ವರ್ಯೋ ಅನ್ ಆಪುಲನ್ಸ್ ಮದ ಬೈ ದ ಇಂಟಾಕ್ಸಿಕೇಷನ್ ಉನ್ನದ್ಧ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ರೈನ್ಡ್ ನ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಶ್ರೇಯ ರಿಯಲ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ವಿಂದತೆ ಅಪ್ಟೈನ್ ನೃಪ ಅಕಿಂಗ್ ತ್ವತ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮಾಯಾ ಬೈ ದ ಪೋಟೆನ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಮೋಹಿತ ಡಿಲ್ಯೂಡೆಡ್ ಅನಿತ್ಯ ಟೆಂಪ್ರರಿ ಮನ್ಯತೆ ಹಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸಂಪದ ಅಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅಚಲ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಯಾಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ವಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಪುಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರೂಲಿಂಗ್ ಪವರ್ ಎ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಲೂಸಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಸ್ಟ್ರೈಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ಟೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ವೆಲ್ಫೇರ್ ದಸ್ ಬಿವಿಲ್ಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಯುವರ್ ಇಲ್ಯೂಸರಿ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಹಿ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಂಪ್ರರಿ ಆಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಯಾಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಪುಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ ರೂಲಿಂಗ್ ಪವರ್ ಎ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಲೂಸಸ್ ಆಲ್ ರಿಸ್ಟ್ರೈಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಅಪ್ಟೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ವೆಲ್ಫೇರ್ ದಸ್ ಬಿವಿಲ್ಡರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಯುವರ್ ಇಲ್ಯೂಸರಿ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಹಿ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಂಪ್ರರಿ ಆಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಟಾಕ್ಸಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೈಡ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಬೌಂಡ್ರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಗವರ್ನ್ ಬೈ ಧರ್ಮ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗ್ರಾಜುವಲ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಪರ್ಫೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಬ್ಲೈಂಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪವರ್ ಹವ್ ಅವರ್ ಎ ಫೂಲಿಶ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಸಿಟೇಟ್ ಟು ಆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿಮ್ಸಿಕಲಿ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಅನ್ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ಲಿ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನೌ ದ ಸಿಚುವೇಶನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರಸ್ ವೆಸ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಲಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಸಾಯ ಭೂತಿಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಂ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಶ್ಚತ್ಯಾದೇ ಸಿತಾರಿಣೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತಮ್ಯನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪಕದಾಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪತಾಂತಿಕ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೋಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಕದಾತಾ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರುಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ so these are very very important verses of course bhagavatam every verse is important lord chaitanya said every syllable is important every word has got unlimited meaning lord chaitanya said in shrimad bhagavatam i am not of course a scholar nor do i know the actual purport of ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಐ ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಸಂಹಾವ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಮರ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ದಿ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ಈವನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲಿನೇಷನ್ಸ್ to do some devotional service so uh these kings are praying they were imprisoned they were defeated and imprisoned by jarasandha a demoniac king jara is the name of his foster mother she was a witch 
She was a demoness. And Sandha means brought together. In Sanskrit, Sandhi is there. When words join together, Sandhi. Tattvamasi. Sandhi is there. First two word is, they always translate as Tat, that, Tvam, you are, Asi. And that's not the translation Lord Chaitanya gave. Did you know that? Because when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, then Lord Chaitanya told his sannyas guru that I will give you the mantra with which you can initiate me. So Prabhupada says, in this way, Lord Chaitanya initiated the guru who was then going to initiate him. And then he said, Tattva Masi, but he said, but, but this is a Mayavadi mantra. No, no, he said, this is a Vaishnava mantra. Long time ago in San Francisco, some, some, some in, Indian called me Hindu, Hindu devotee, generally foolish. Did you write that down? Generally foolish. So, <laughs> he was saying, Prabhu, can you give a lecture? Some kind of something. I said, Okay, when do you want the lecture? Such, such, such. So, okay. He said, what topic should be? I said, put any topic you want. He said, no, 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 Prabhu, please, you give a topic. So I said, we are all gods. And he said, Prabhu, that's Mayavadi philosophy. I said, no. How are you going to write it? He said, we are all gods, G-O-D-S. No, no. We are all gods, G-O-D, apostrophe, yes. So, Lord Chaitanya said, Tasya Tvamasi. I mean, this is not what I was planning to speak, but then I... Mm -hmm. Tasya Tvam in Sandhi becomes Tat Tvamasi. That is Sanskrit grammar. It's joined. Like did not in Sandhi in English, I mean, but they don't have grammar. Didn't. Or didn't or whatever it is. So, Tasya Tomasi, you belong to him. That is the mantra, that we belong to Krishna. Jivera Swarup, isn't it? Nityara Krishna Das. So, uh, Jarasandha was born with his body split into two parts separately. Half, half he was born. We cannot understand such a thing was possible. And he was cast aside and Jara while going saw that. And she was so advanced in material science that she could figure out and she put it together and joined it. Then the baby started crying, it became alive. Bah! And he was crying. Then Jarasandha benedicted him, said that this, this central line is weak in your body, but any time anybody separates, you'll join again. So, Bhima fighting, he knew that this point was weak, he removed. And then it joined again. And Jarasandha, ha! He got up again. Jarasandha was a powerful man. They fought for so many days. Bhima couldn't kill him. Very, very powerful fellow, as, as strong as Bhima. Then Lord Krishna removed this, this tore, tore this leaf into two. And then he put it in the opposite direction. Jai Shri Gaur Nithai Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai 
श्री श्री राधा रास बिहारी ललिता विशाखी जी की जाए श्री श्री सीताराम लक्ष्मण वान की जाए ही पुट इट इन द अपोजिट डिरेक्शन आफ्टर सींग दैट बीमा अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज टू बी डन द नेक्स्ट टाइम ही टोर एम एंड पुट इम अपोजिट वे देन इट कुड नॉट जॉइन Head was here, half head was here, half bottom legs were there, half bottom leg. How can they join? He died. So he was such a powerful king, Jarasandhan. He defeated so many kings and imprisoned them, put them. Of course, these people became kings because they were. Pious, isn't it? In the olden days, the entire planet was called Bharat, as we all know. And uh, what is now called Bharat, India, was only the capital. It was on three sides ocean, and one side Himalayan mountains. So they have selected that place as the capital for the planet. and so all the kings that were in different different places they had their headquarters in this capital city which is now a country and so the mar war was fought mahabharat war mahabharat yuddha was fought and uh, so the kings were very powerful kings of course in the previous era not only this bharat kanda but bharata varsh was also part of the kingdom of bharat so people like maharaj ayati and all it mahabharatam describes used to travel lakhs and lakhs of miles to visit their kingdom so a very big thing we we don't know our consciousness is contracted therefore we don't see anything was it right here we think there is a bombay city very busy people are going you know try and try and try and try but right here there are much bigger cities and much more advanced people living we don't know another point it's not we are just like a ant who is in this place does not know the opulence of this place It's all is to be known, it's not unknowable. And these kings were very powerful. Of course, nobody is born as a king unless he is very pious. In the olden days, whenever you were born as a rich man or as a king or a knowledgeable brahmana, it was the result of piety. Nowadays, if somebody is rich, it means he is a crook. The olden days, a rich person means pious person. but nowadays a rich person means is crook so these kings were by nature pious but particularly they were actually favored by krishna and therefore they had to lose the battle with jarasandha and they were uh, in prison and they were not even given food and they couldn't bathe and by the time krishna liberated them from the prison they were they, they were like you know oh uh, uh, kya hua they, they 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 couldn't do anything they were very weak and like that they came in they were not the old previous kings powerful and you know with scent and this and that the old and the king means he won't even take bath himself <laughs> still There has to be tens of thousands of servants who actually bathe him, and music will be played when he's, you know, uh, taking bath. There'll be beautiful fragrances and everything. And then, as soon as he gets up, the water, somebody will put some you know, towel and this, and and somebody will bring the vasras one after another, and then all these avarnas. And it was natural for them. They they had that. capacity to take that level of service so that was not the kings that were in front of krishna they were uh, like that but 
they were favored by krishna therefore they could understand by krishna's mercy we had to undergo this suffering you see just like one person came one indian came to see prabhu pada and he told him i am suffering so much why is god making me suffer prabhu said that's your fortune because you are asking and you are thinking why is god making me suffer but another rascal would say i am suffering let me drink some whisky or let me do this or that but you are thinking god so if something makes you remember god prabhu said how is it suffering and if something makes you forget god then how is it enjoyment so the kings they may think and the king is not just only the king everybody is so everyone is the king and his kingdom is his body the powerful asset everything happens by your will you don't have to do anything if you look the eyes look the nose smells and touch it's wonderful it's completely the body is serving you so we get intoxicated nobody is thinking that this body is there it's so powerful so nice and i have to use this for serving krishna so a king is an extreme example then he thinks that all these assets and everything is there all the power i have he doesn't think it's for serving krishna like we have this prime minister of this country of course we are not politicians we don't care who is coming or going but at the same time he is a deshabakt deshabakt means he thinks bhoma ijja dehi worshipable land of birth so he wants to actually make india number 3 in the world but that is not the job of a king the job of the king is to make all his citizens become krishna conscious similarly for you as the kingdom the body is there its subjects are hands and legs and everything they have to be engaged in krishna service rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruttamam so every soul must think that i have this kingdom my body and this is actually i must engage in krishna service otherwise i will suffer maharaj prithu explains that when a king explains and uh, engages all his people in krishna service he get one third of everybody's one one seventh of everybody's punya and if he lets them engage in sinful activities activities other than krishna consciousness then he will get one third of their papa so if your country has got crores and crores of people population and you are getting one third of their papa that means you are actually as being a prime minister you actually get the papa of crores of births human birth that's not very good so uh, this is the point these kings are coming to realization by krishna's mercy they are saying my dear lord by your mercy we are now realizing that we are misusing the assets of our kingdom for our own pleasure this is also arjuna was thinking that this kingdom this war is being fought for his enjoyment therefore you are saying what is the use of this kingdom and what is the use of all this boga and aishwarya 
If in order to get it, we have to kill the very people with whom we are supposed to enjoy. But Arjuna did not know, Srila Prabhupada explains, that this war was being fought not for Arjuna's pleasure, but for Krishna's pleasure. Krishna wanted this war to be fought. Krishna wants Kali Yuga to come for his own purpose. So, if we think that things are for our own pleasure, that is called Maya or illusion. It's a very powerful message of Srimad Bhagavatam that Prabhupada has brought for us. Therefore, you and your own kingdom you must use for Krishna. We should not become proud of our health. Then when you become old, like me, you see that the body is not acting the way you want it to act. A few years ago, it was going wherever I wanted it to go. Now, it won't. That is the niyati, the law of the world. In the next verse, the kings are explaining. They are not ordinary people. They are highly advanced, pious souls. And when they saw Krishna, when they came out of the prison, they actually, Krishna gave them a darshan. Otherwise, people look at Krishna as an ordinary person. Avajananti maam mudha manushum tanu mashritam ajananto parambhavam mamabhuta maheshwaram. When you see Krishna, it looks like, he looks like an ordinary person. If you don't have the right, but they saw Krishna, they got darshan that is there in a, in a verse before, with conch shell and this and that and everything, they actually saw Krishna. That means they are very blessed people, they got darshan of the Lord. What is speaking? You know? What is that? I don't know. Huh? No translation going on, but other, something else also is there so much. I can't focus and concentrate. Anyway, should be quiet. People are all speaking there, unnecessary. So they actually saw Krishna. And because they saw Krishna, they could understand that this world is an illusion. Remember that. Otherwise, not possible. In the darkness of the night, you cannot see anything. When the sun comes, you can see. Maya Andakar, Krishna Surya Sama. So, if we are in darkness of Maya, we cannot see things. Then they are saying in the next verse, Murga Trishnam Yata Bala Manyanta Udakashayam Evam Vaikarikim Mayayam Vaikarikim Mayam Ayukta Vastu Ayukta Vastu Chachakshate. Just as men of childish intelligence consider a mirage in the desert to be a pond of water. So those who are irrational look upon the illusory transformations of Maya as substantial. So you have to understand that this is the first step of Krishna Consciousness. We can't be just uh, uneducated and think that we are going to advance. Srila Prabhupada said that if you simply chant Hare Krishna, that's enough. But if you want to know philosophy, we have more than 70 books, you can read it. If you want to know. It doesn't mean that if you simply chant Hare Krishna, you won't know philosophy. That is nonsense. What is that? Nonsense. No Prabhu, I'm just chanting Hare Krishna. No, you idiot. How long have you been chanting? Then Why don't you know? Vedanta should know. 
வாசுதேவே பகவதி பக்தி யோக பிரயோஜித்தக ஜனயத்தே ஆசு ஜானம் ச வைராகியம் எத் அகைத்துக்கம் யூ மஸ்ட் ஹாவ் நாலேஜ் இல்ல பிரபுபாத் ரைட் செட் இஃப் யூ சான் ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா நீ டோன்ட் ஹாவ் நாலேஜ் தட் மீன்ஸ் சம்திங் இஸ் ராங் சோ இட் இஸ் த டியூட்டி ஆஃப் த ஹியூமன் பீயிங் டு ஹியர் திஸ் மெசேஜ் டோன்ட் பி லேசி சோ வெதர் யூ ரீட் பாகவதம் அண்ட் ஸ்டடி ஃபிலாசபி other whether you chant hare krishna you must come to know krishna factually with all his energies and the very first point is this point that they are saying that mruga uh, trishna mruga trishna means mirage mirage means sometimes when you walk in the street on a hot day it will look like there is water at a distance but it's not actually water if you go there you see the same hot sand and but from distance it looks like water there is no water looks like water try to understand this point it is not a matter of simply saying oh world is maya the cinema song also is there world is maya like that that is this is not a matter of that it is a matter of actually realizing so simultaneously the narada muni says just as when thunder strikes there is sound and lightning immediately together similarly when you do bhakti jnana and vairagya both come together you actually get knowledge and you get vairagya also because you know the world is false i have given an example that sometimes on the street you find a bag with 10 million dollars everybody is attracted to take it something will use even a devotee may think oh let me take it and use it for krishna's service but if you come to know that this is counterfeit note not real note then you know that if you take it and use it you'll get into trouble similarly why are we taking this kingdom maya's kingdom the body maya has given a kingdom to everybody the body prabhu krishna says so that prabhu of this fort why are they thinking it is it can be used because it is they think it's real but it is actually false so the king or king is realizing that this world is like the mirage and they look upon the illusory transformations of maya as substantial maya is very strong just like you see somebody going there and after some time is gone how is it that suddenly i see somebody and after 2 minutes there i don't see how they are there no they are not here they went somewhere why am i not see you have to think similarly a man is there for some time and after some time he is not there he is gone dead and gone but he is still there the soul we are not seeing sun is also rising now we see the sun after some time we don't see it is dark but sun is still there in the same place in the sky it's same bright why you are not seeing i'm going to make a very important point this is not just philosophy dry philosophy why you are not able to see the sun somebody might say oh because sun has come sun has risen during the day i can see but yeah where, where is the sun it's not on earth it's far away you follow it's far away you are thinking it has appeared on earth but no it is far away so when you mistakenly think it is on earth you also mistakenly think it's gone but when the sun is there suppose you are able to use the energy of the sun because everything is sun's energy in the material world and you are able to go above the sky 
above earth and then you can see the sun <coughs> i'm trying to explain who is guru you have no idea where i'm going that sitting and listening like i uh, was the usual bhagavatam class you know story 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 you have no idea where i'm going you see so if you actually go above the earth's atmosphere using that sun's energy everything is sun's energy that's a science then you can see the sun it is different from the way you saw it when you were in on earth and then in the earth is slowly turning and uh, the place where you were seeing the sun it was daylight it has become day night and dark but there you are still seeing the same sun are you following or not following sun is never so but if you are staying in the earth and simply blah blahing oh sun is always there is nonsense i mean you are a fool who doesn't know anything similarly krishna is always there and the acharya is also always there you follow or you don't follow you don't know to science so when the acharya is present that you think is present then using his energy if you can rise and you can contact him on the transcendental plane then even though in the material world people may say is gone but you know he is there this is this is called surrendering to the guru this is called actually becoming initiated you have no clue <laughs> what is what and if you are seeing that sun 24/7 then there is no question of saying is dead so people who have only seen sun on the earth they also experience sunset and they also say now prabhupada is gone <laughs> then you can never know this world is a illusion not possible you have to remain a buffalo and you have to suffer are you following but if you surrender to this great personality my dear sir i am just a fool and a rascal like these people prayed you pray i am proud of my kingdom of this body and i am simply thinking this is for meant for my enjoyment i must become this i must become that i am an illusion kindly save me and when the sun of the pure devotee enters your heart then krishna will enter that ba baad me you have, this is principle at that time you will understand what is material energy it's just flashing flashing are you following just like if you see in a particular angle you will see water there but if you go nearby there's no water like that this body is appearing as if it's real it is doesn't exist try to imagine this is not even real but you are completely convinced i am completely convinced this body is real and if you don't know this this is the verse this is what they are speaking and if you simply speak some story about krishna the nonsense try to understand what is krishna consciousness today morning somebody put chat gpt said something who will tell your guru and he put something i said this is nonsense i put it <laughs> is nonsense ha huh? immediately i put right but the next second i put it is nonsense what is this nonsense they said okay, please explain okay now i am explaining because the class is on this i didn't know that so you have to know that this world is a illusion and the real is the bhagavat 
That's why I always say he's asli, I'm nakli. This is just a samatkar of the maya. Have you realized it? No. Then, this is what the shastras say. I should think this. Even if I know, like the foolish scientist, that I know there is electricity, there is magnetism, this and that, you don't know. And even if you say, I don't know this is Maya, but that's what the Vedas say, that's what Bhagavatam says, then you are right. It's called descending knowledge. What is it called? But Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavatam, you have to go beyond descending knowledge. Did you know that? Did you know? You are surprised? There in fourth canto. Go to fourth canto. Okay, I even give you a clue. Go to this chapter on Dhruva Maharaj goes back home, back to Godhead. Go through every verse. Next class I give, I'll ask you. Prabhupada says you have to go beyond descending knowledge. And we are thinking descending knowledge is great. Isn't it? Following or not following? Yes. Krishna consciousness is a great science. I mean, so much I have... You are not interested, you are not patient. You don't want to hear. Oh, this... Uh, I can explain, but... People think that's Maya. What is the verse of uh, Srila Rupa Goswami? That... Hmm. Correct. Very good. Prapanchi kataya buddhya harisambandhi vasuna mumukshubir parityago falgu vairagyam katyate. Prapanchi kataya buddhya. When we speak actual Bhagavatam, they think this is material knowledge. Prapanchi kataya buddhya. And they reject it. No. You should know how much beautiful it is. Bhagavatam. So the kings are saying, just like this world is a mirage, an illusion, and when you take it for real, we are thinking it's real. And we must not think this is just for the kings, it's for everybody. You are taking this body to be real, the mind to be real. This body is coming out of sound. But it looks substantial. So real. But it's coming out of sound. It is simply say body and has become this body. Sabdat, Srishti, Sabdat, Anabrati. From sound comes creation and the same sound can take you back. So if you're chanting Hare Krishna, you must know all these things. So the idea of this world, the idea, there is one uh, Western philosopher called Bishop Barclay. He had a, he had a philosophy in, in this. Everybody says something that's, everybody, anybody who says anything that has some connection to Krishna, that's okay, that's not important. So Krishna actually puts the idea of this world in your mind. He was right, but it's very, but he doesn't know Sankhya, so we cannot take it seriously. But somehow Krishna has given him this intelligence. He has said that. You see? You must know what is the difference between dead body and living body. You follow? What is the difference between dead body and living body? Everybody will say soul. Isn't it? <laughs> Nonsense. No. The dead body is different from the living body at the level of matter. What a gigantic illusion this world is. Matter, scientists think the difference between the science of matter in Bhagavatam and science of matter in modern science is that modern science begins with the assumption that matter exists. 
Suppose if all living entities in the world are dead in one second, suppose they say, still the matter exists, that's their belief. Isn't it? Even if nobody is here, this table will exist, that's what they believe. But Bhagavatam says, no. Matter means a collection of properties and they cannot exist without Krishna. Rasoham apsu kaunteya. What does it mean? This matter with properties, this form, this, everything, is Krishna's energy. And that's a science. I, if you are all interested, I can speak. Otherwise, I'll, I'm not interested to speak. I, I can speak so much, but I don't. Nobody is interested. Because in order to understand this point, you have to understand what is matter, what is primary properties, what are secondary properties. You have to know all these things. But who is interested? No, no, no. We, we. Somebody said, who is that? He, he was saying. One, one class. Didn't you say? We have, our, we have our opinion, they have their opinion. Somebody said once. No, you can't say that. With respect to God, with respect to soul, you can have your opinion. Scientists will say, we don't think there is a soul. You can say, no, we believe in a soul. Scientists may say, we don't think in God. We will say, we don't care for you. We believe in God. You can say that. But matter, you cannot say that. No. You cannot say, matter has got five elements. They will say, nonsense. Matter has got 120 elements and we have proved it with our periodic table. We have created so much technology. How you say it is five elements? It's gone. What will you say? So matter is the domain in which you can't actually challenge them unless you have knowledge. You can't say faith. On faith you can say, I believe in God. On faith you can say, I believe in soul. But you cannot say on faith that I think there are eight elements or 24 elements. You are following? You can't say earth, water, wind, fire. They say that's all Greeks said it. We have disproved it. So what are you going to say? That Prabhupada said. Prabhupada said. As soon as you say Shastra, they'll say mythology. For what? For matter. For God, they accept. We can neither prove nor disprove. They'll accept. You go and ask any scientist, can you disprove existence of God? They'll say no. You cannot prove, we cannot disprove. They'll accept that. Can you disprove the existence of the soul? No. We cannot prove the existence of soul. Fine. They'll accept that. But can you prove the existence of matter, your idea of matter? They'll say, yes. And you're caught. Are you following? So it's a very beautiful, this verse has got a beautiful thing. So let me try to explain. Let me load you people with something. So if, even if you don't like, who cares? Because <laughs> you have to know in what ignorance you are. I'm very sorry. Anger is coming just like Anuman was angry. Ravana. For me, so many decades have gone on. Are you following? You're following? No following. Then? Uh, you're following or not following? Good. Let me give you an example. See, these are the thoughts. So scientists believe that matter exists on their own. And what does it mean? It means that this table exists on its own. What do you mean by that? This is called operational definition in science. What do scientists mean by saying a table exists whether you are there or not, the table exists? Correct? The operational definition is position. Where is this table? Somebody asks you, what will you say? Huh? Kaha hai table? Dikao? Huh? No, scientists don't answer like that. 
he's saying it's in the within the temple room no 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 they'll say you first take a point somewhere maybe that corner from that corner if we go 5 feet this way 10 feet this way 2 feet up then the table is there or whatever it is 1 foot up so they give you what are called coordinates you are following so let's say that like a simple thing one di diagonal coordinate it's 10 feet from that corner so it has got a position so suppose the position of the temp uh, table is x then what is the value of x in this sir then this is all you learn in engineering but you don't know what is it meaning <laughs> i mean engineering science phd all fools i learned science from the great scientist shila prabhupada i learned i had to i also studied btech mtech don't think i didn't study <laughs> I, i when i last started learn, when prabhupada told me to do quantum mechanics i didn't even know such a subject exists and i started learning and he taught me i realized wow i never knew there was one guy who was a stanford phd student in physics he came to see me somehow he was in the movement for some time then he came to see me then i was you're talking to me for some time about quantum mechanics and he said i am at stanford which is the greatest university in the world and uh, i have never learned such things i'm finishing my phd from stanford i didn't even know such things and i did so many courses on quantum mechanics quantum mechanics 101 201 301 401 no i i have learned from the real person once Prabhupada was, and this devotee told me himself the story. He was going on a morning walk, and he was just a new bhakta, but he was a PhD. And uh, so he was an American PhD, and he said that one day I, I, we couldn't go on that morning walk, and one day I managed to go on a morning walk. I also just jumped up and I was going. And I was going against Prabhupada. How was time? It was nine ten. Nine seven, okay. So I was going with Prabhupada, and then somebody said, "Prabhupada, this is Michael or whatever it is. He's a big scientist. He joined as a new bhakta. He was a PhD from American University. And Prabhupada was walking, and he said, 'Prabhupada is a big scientist.' And Prabhupada just turned and looked at him, and he said." big animal <laughs> and he just walked and then this devotee said that i was actually very happy that papa said that and then i said prabhupad you are the real scientist and papa didn't say anything and he was just walking and then he suddenly stopped and they turned he smiled and he said that's correct the real scientist now he may have said it but i have i realized it and i'm realizing it every moment following so if i say x is the position huh and what is the value of x in this example x equal to 10 is the value this x has that value whether or not you look at the table whether you go and check the table is there or not if it if is right if it is not bluffing then the table has the value that the table exists in its position whether you look at it or not that means x has got a value 10 whether you measure it or not if you may make a tape and you measure it's 10 but whether you measure or not it's 10 is this point clear then came this is the beginning assumption of science this is what science means when they say this world is real they say matter is real matter exists they have conviction but bhagavatam says no that's not true and that's what the 24 elements are how will you know what is earth water fire ether if you say if you don't know what i'm saying now not possible 
It's a great science. I'm just beginning. Now in science, anybody knows? Anyway. There is something called differential operator, d by dx. Yeah. Now, if, if we put a d by dx of x, it will be 1. So, it is not x anymore. But if you put d by dx of e power x, it will be e power x. d by dx of e power x is e power x. But scientists will say it is actually 1 into e power x. So, e power x is there, d by dx of e power x is 1 into e x, and that 1 is called eigenvalue. x is called value, x equal to 10 is value, but scientists have another mathematics, where x has eigenvalue. You don't know that. That value exists only if you have d by dx. With d squared x by dt squared, it may be there or not. R d squared by dx squared, more accurately. You may not know this, but just get the general point. The same x has got no value until an operator d by dx observed. That's mathematics. But in physics, that translates into measurement. They, so they found out after 500 years, this is the bottom point, try to understand. That's what this verse is about. They found out that the position of this object exists only when you measure, not otherwise. And measurement ultimately means somebody has to measure and look. So, any object in this world exists only when you look at it, not otherwise. That's what I meant by saying, why did this man come I, and then I don't see him. There was somebody here five minutes ago. He's not there. Why? Because now I'm not looking. It looks like a simple thing. Yeah, if, if he's here, you'll look, and if he's not here, you'll... No, 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 it's not like that. This is Bhagavatam. If you want to understand the Panchabhutas, you must first begin with this. You knew d by dx, right? You put your hand up. Isn't it? Did they teach you all this in college? They taught you the, all these points? Yes or no? Then why are you saying yes? Buddha. That's why I said Hindus, fools. Simply going there, b tech I'm B-Tech, I'm N-Tech, I'm this, that. I'm probably, you're in the illiterate idiot you are. This is what you should be told. No. Oh. I, I experienced these things. I'll tell you one more example. Once, Sridhar Swami, Apna Sridhar Swami. I was giving a lecture in IIT. At that time, I gave a lecture, many became devotees, now they are leaders in this con. I'm talking nonsense. What can I do? They are big preachers. Now, now, what happened? I was just going outside. Suddenly, Sita Swami came. He said, Rasraj Prabhu, I heard you are giving a lecture at IIT today. I said, yes, Maharaj. I want to go. I said, okay, Maharaj, come. So, we went in the car. This was in the 80s, not now. Much before so many people, before these people joined me. So, I mean, we went. When we came back, Siddha Swami said, I understood. Today you didn't mention Krishna once, he said. I said, yeah, I didn't, because the scientific lesson. I said, yes, Maharaj. And he said, I could understand now how difficult it is to make scientific preaching. Because you didn't mention Krishna once, but you spoke about Bhagavatam. No Krishna, no soul, nothing. So Prabhupada said that, apart from Vedas and Puranas, you go to all the scientific preaching in Iskhan. Vedic model of consciousness, isn't it? Vedic cosmology. Nonsense. As soon as you say that, scientists will reject it. Before you can speak one further word, they'll reject it. That's a basis, scientific basis. You don't know what is there. Anyway, in that lecture that day, something interesting happened. I started the lecture by saying, suppose you are walking on the street and in front of you there is a person and his purse fell out. We say purse, but in the West they say wallet. So the wallet fell down. And he picked it up. 
It's your wallet or his wallet? They said, it's his wallet. Suppose you say it's yours, what, what does it make you? The students all said, thief. IIT student, in the olden days, they were more pious. Thief. Then I asked, did the apple fall down due to gravity before Newton or not? They all said yes. So when Newton found the law of gravity, is it Newton's law or God's law? They said it's God's law. When if you call it Newton's law, what does it make Newton? Thief. All the devotees, vaja, tali vaja. Ah. And all of you will think it's a good argument, isn't it? It's nonsense. <laughs> I didn't know that. It's a nonsense. It's a Pashanti argument, atheistic argument. Try, try to understand how I, when I say I learn science from His Divine Grace. It's a fact. So I, everybody tali bacha, I was also, okay, okay I just speak, I, I always felt I was a fool, so I was not particularly impressed. Anyway, devotees are all happy, Rajamsa Prabhu was there from the olden days, still there. So he, and, and we all dis distributed books and then sweet rice, prasadam, everything. We think that the talk is a success. I came back, went to sleep. Next day morning, I woke up around 3.30 to go to the morning program. As soon as I woke up, I just opened my eyes and Papa said, it is Newton's law. He said, it's not God's law. And if you want to preach science for me, do, some, do not preach, do. You have to stop this nonsense. I was shocked. Oh my God. Isn't that... It's not Krishna's law, he said. Took me long time. Next class, you remind me, I'll, I'll tell you. It took me long time to figure out how according to Bhagavatam, it is Newton's law and it's not our law. Similarly, once I read, you know, in, in the Western thing, that brain is the source of consciousness. I was thinking, how can these people actually believe that this piece of meat Dead meat is the source of consciousness. How, how stupid they can be. <laughs> Prabhupada told me that is correct according to Bhagavatam. Your understanding of brain is wrong. Hmm? Their statement is not wrong, but their statement, of their understanding of brain is wrong. You don't know. To wrap it up. Therefore, when the kings are saying this world is a mirage, You have uh, internet on that? No. So when the world is a mirage, it means it is... Uh, there? Connected? So, uh, they are basically saying an object does not have the position that you think it has. Because in the mirage, when you say there is water there, and not only there is no water, but in science, if there is no water, it means it has no position. That's the important point. With the operational definition. You have to think like that is called science. You don't simply say water doesn't exist. You say water doesn't have a position without measurement. The water is there only when you look. Did you get it? Put Einstein moon in the... Get it? Get that quote. Put Einstein moon and then uh, that Arthur Pai thing, the quote. Huh? Right. Just put Einstein moon, it'll come. Einstein says that, you know, do you think the moon exists only when you look at it? Put it on the screen. Oh, I did you just switch this off. So please try to understand this, this Bhagavatam verse. This world is Maya. This is the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Just as water seen on land. Right? Yeah. Huh? That, that's one way of putting it. But he asked, do you think the moon exists only when you look at it? That's another quote. But anyway, even that you put, that's the same thing. What you put, that's good enough. So Einstein says that this modern physics, this problem he couldn't solve for 45 years. 
This problem is still not solved for 110 years. I have solved it seven months ago. There's a movement, no, no, nobody knows. And they're asking me, explain why you just uh, said ChatGPT, definition of guru is wrong. What will I talk about guru when you don't even know anything about matter? The whole movement is ignorant. I'm sorry, but it has to be said. You can't know that by reading the books. No, you have to go to Parsan Bhagavad. That's all, that is guru. Anyway, so Einstein said, According to modern science, the moon exists only when you look at it, which is also the same for table. And he can also say that my, I, my brain looks, exists only when you look at it. <laughs> that means Einstein has to say, I don't have any brain unless you look at it. He should have said that. <laughs> so this is what they have found out in modern science, that a macroscopic object, it's, uh, of course, the physicists will say that, you know, it's only for microscopic objects, not for my, it's all nonsense. Einstein knew quantum mechanics better than anybody. He's the creator of the field. I mean, he's, you know, that's, that's what it is. So I'm, 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 I'm planning to write a small booklet. I have no time for those things because I have to get this solution out into the marketplace with science and technology. Then it will be scientific. Krishna consciousness will be scientific. So, uh, I am, I wanted to write how to be, whatever, I, I just gave a, a title yesterday. How not to be fooled by quantum physicists or something like that. Because they created the physics and they take nonsense. Anyway, forget it. So, science is telling that the world of objects that you see, they exist only when you look at it. That's not what Bhagavatam is saying. That's not Maya. Now, if you try to connect this to Maya, it'll be wrong. But imagine they have come to this argument scientifically because of this value, value and eigenvalue distinction. They have come to this scientifically. That's in the Bhagavatam. The kings are saying that. But that's only the beginning. How to now connect it to Maya is very difficult. You can't direct The world, of course, exists at different, different levels as a separate topic. But such things are there in science. So, this world of objects, Vishayi, Vedyam Vastavam Vastu, this is the second verse of Bhagavatam. They are saying that if you want to understand Krishna, you must understand, in fact, the existence of objects. So, these worldly objects, they minik minik, they come and go. But transcendental objects like Krishna and Prabhupada, they're eternal. So, when you actually connect to Prabhupada on the transcendental plane, then you can't connect with me on the transcendental plane because I'm just an animal. This is just a material but not even real. His body is real. Guru Shunaramati. He is real. So he appears to appear and disappear. But actually he is eternal. And you will know that if you go above the material atmosphere. That is the first step to actually become a devotee. You have to connect to his divine grace. Everybody says, I will connect to Prabhupada. How will you connect? Do you know that he exists now? No. Prabhupada once came in Mayapur and he passed Bhakti Siddhanta's temple and went straight to Iskon. Next day his disciples are saying, Prabhupada, all your godbrothers are criticizing you. He said, oh, for what? He said, because they said you didn't stop at your Guru Maharaj's place. He said, my Guru Maharaj is with me 24-7. I don't have to stop there, he said. Why? Because he has gone above the material atmosphere. Of course, he's always there. And he's always directly in touch with his son. S-U-N son. All 24 hours. That is Krishna consciousness. 24-7. So this verse is connected to that. Any questions or comments? should only just get a general idea from this lecture that there is lot, many things I don't know. Not that you'll understand anything.
You are getting that feeling or not? That there are many things you don't know. Did you know that this verse, where they say, just as men of childish intelligence think that water is real like that, we feel is real, is connected to quantum mechanics? Yes. Hare Krishna. Mm. Uh, in uh, Eighth Kind of Bhagavatam, mm. third chapter, fourteenth verse, Srila Prabhupada translated like this, that, my Lord, you are the observer of all the objectives of the senses. Without your mercy, there is no possibility of solving the problems of doubts. The material world is just like a shadow resembling you. Indeed, one accepts this material world as real because it gives a glimpse of your existence. Yeah. But you can't understand, you can read all this. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't know. Do you realize that? Uh, you realize that you don't understand it. Yeah. That f that's the point. And for that you have to know this science. Uh, my question is, uh, um, are, are they coming to the point that uh, observer is a... Uh, no. That's, that's another foolishness. Consciousness? No. It has nothing to do with consciousness. Unless I measure the table doesn't I know, exist. That, that is, that's what the current science says. But, uh, no, it's a very big sign, no. That, that somebody wrote to me yesterday, one devotee from South India, that uh, according to quantum mechanics, it seems without the observer, nothing happens, and therefore consciousness, super-consciousness, wrote something. No, that's not what quantum mechanics says. Quantum mechanics is simply saying, the instead of X being the position of an object, right, we have an, and, uh, you know, we have an, op, uh, bay, uh, what do you call, uh, in, uh, in in quantum mechanics, X is called what? Uh, X is an uh, observable, not a variable. And uh, it has an operator, an operator associated with measurement. And only when the operator operates on the observable, does the observable have a value, unlike a variable. That's all it says. Now you have to understand that mathematics and you have to solve it using Bhagavad So our aim is to show that the table exists even when you don't look at it, even in quantum mechanics. And it turns out that that very important point, now this is, this is, the question is very, he's asking the question, does quantum mechanics have anything to do with consciousness, observer, and all that. I'm saying no, try to understand, because quantum mechanics only says mathematically, Instead of a variable x, there should be observable and the observable as an operator and it doesn't have eigenvalue until you make a measurement. Fine. Now, according to the idea of variable and all that, according to classical mechanics, it will mean that table does not have a position until you measure. But we want to sh that we don't accept. If we think that this is called maya, therefore we should put soul into the science and all, it will go wrong. Because you won't be able to prove it. You won't be able to make science, technology, and you have to do that. So the answer turns out to be that, very important point, the answer turns out to be that the table has a position exactly like in classical mechanics, whether you measure or not. So this is not connected still to Krishna. It seems like that. Then it turns out that the table that has the position in quantum mechanics without measurement is not this table. You know, it is not mental concept either. It's the same physical table that I have to explain more. And it turns out that it's the table that you can touch, smell and feel. It's not the table that exists independent of your sensations. So it's a very beautiful thing, I mean, it's not, uh, in, in physics the answers are different, but that's too technical, I won't go into that. So it, you have to prove that the matter is real, but that matter has properties because of Krishna, not because of you. So it's a very, very beautiful way Lord Chaitanya is bringing Bhagavatam into science. We should know that. We should, if you try to pick the low-hanging trees by saying it's observer is involved consciousness, it's a very gigantic challenge. That's why I'm so quiet, even though I think I've solved this problem. 
Because Prabhupada has to lead the way, he has to say what is the next step. We have to go like that. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Uh, regarding Srila Prabhupada, uh, Narad Muni uh, says in 7th canto 15th chapter, Yasya Sakshat Bhagavati Jnana Deepena Pradav Guru Matya Dibir Shri Shutam Satya Tasya Sarvam Kunjara Sauchavar. If anybody thinks that the spiritual master is like an ordinary man, whatever he is doing, it is like uh, elephant bath. Yeah, but the word spiritual master is wrong. Because S.S. Akshat Bhagavati is... No, 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 for Iskan, the word spiritual master is wrong. Yeah, but... Yeah, then they will have all nonsense. Sorry, don't make me stay. That I told you. Brahmananda told me personally. Brahmananda is one of the first disciples of Prabhupada. I knew him well and he told me once that in New York, after he set up the Guru Puja, he was chanting, Jaya Guru Deva, Jaya Guru Deva, Jaya Guru Deva. And Prabhupada watched us and said, and so he went nearby. Prabhupada said, Which Guru Deva? And then he went back and said, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, Yes. So don't ever sing in the morning after Guru Puja, Guru Ashtakam, Jaya Guru Deva. I see people, no, this is for Prabhupada. This 7.15 puja is not Guru Puja, it's Prabhupada Puja. So always you chant Jai Prabhupada. You understand? You will never see me say, all glories to Sri Guru and Gauranga. Do you see me say that? Never. What do I say? Huh? I can't hear. No, no, and? Uh, all glory to Srila Prabhupada and Gauranga. If I said Pranadvani, you, you notice, that's what I will say. You following or not following? And the problem is, they will say, oh, this is Ritvik philosophy. No, no. Ritvik philosophy is different. Both the Ritviks, I have to say this, because otherwise they always say, oh, Rasas Prabhu is being... <laughs> Ritvik philosophy. They don't know anything. Ritvik philosophy say, both the Ritviks and the Guru system say, Prabhupada is a Siksha Guru, right? They say that or not? Prabhupada is everybody's Siksha Guru. They say that or not? Yes or no? A nonsense. <laughs> now in the Bhagavatam class I'm saying that. The nonsense. No, just because you read Prabhupada's books is not your Siksha Guru. You can't go and buy a read book of Einstein, read and say, Einstein is my teacher. Can you say that? Then? So they should say, he can become your Siksha Guru. Not that he is your Siksha Guru. Are you following? It's not so cheap to get Prabhupada as your Siksha Guru. Hmm. So both of them accept Prabhupada as Siksha Guru. Which is nonsense. And then... One says that he is only Siksha Guru, the other says he is also Diksha Guru. That is different. They're, they're both Iskan and Ritviks are not different as, the, as long as Prabhupada as Siksha Guru is concerned. That is itself is wrong, I am saying. So how can I be Ritvik? You follow my point or not? This is all Shastra. This is philosophy. You have to know. You can't just simply concoct. I'm struggling, I'm discussing with DPC, Biru, hey, well, nobody understands. Now we need a little... They don't know anything. They don't know the sun is 24-7 shining. Did you know that? Then? They're not teaching. Sorry. I freaked out. I went into the zone a little bit. I came back. I normally don't preach those things, but I have to say, I have to tell you, you, when you if you want to understand me, what I'm speaking, like I, I, I told somebody yesterday, I'm not serving ISKCON, I'm serving Prabhupada. You're all serving ISKCON. Good point or not? Huh? Yes. 
that is the acharya is sitting here 24/7 what can i do i was like this from day 1 day 1 when i first came to iskon before i came to iskon when i started reading proper i knew proper you don't know that so this is not something now i'm saying always so you can't learn bhagavatam just by reading that is called green glass knowledge i told you right like you have a button and you have got dirty cloth and then putting water milk in it it will get dirty milk so through your mind and intelligence you are reading the books that is good but you have to go beyond that of course they will throw they'll kill me for saying all this tell everybody is, how many of you are confused put your hand up ah uh, whoever is confused is a rascal rest are fine that's it so nothing to confuse कंतरा श्रीमद्भागवतम की जाय शिल प्रभुपाद की जाय